Hi guys and welcome to another Sailing Nondares video. In this week's episode we continue with boat jobs on dry land. Our boat got hauled out the water in last week's episode. In today's episode we remove the prop shaft, change the shaft seal, change the cutlass bearing and polish the prop. Let's get to it! The prop shaft is attached to the gearbox with this coupling. So I need to take that off so that I can take the prop shaft out so I can then take apart the stern gland and replace this tubing which is very spongy, very soft. So I think it's due for replacement. We were thinking about replacing it with a dripless seal shaft. I guess I should just start undoing bolts and see where that gets me. I will start with this bolt that goes through, it looks like it goes through the prop shaft. These rusty bolts are going to potentially be really stubborn to get rid of. This should really be painted I think to stop it rusting because this is mild steel or iron. And this, these bolts are newer where it's been replaced um, because there was a new gearbox put on this not that long ago. I'm just going to attempt to... I have partially got this bolt out, but with the Allen key head I couldn't spin it for the life of me. Actually when I tried to spin it, it would go in a funny direction, so I think this bolt is bent in its current home. It's bent and I'm going to undo these bolts, or try to, because presumably these are clamping um, the shaft and this is a nut that's sort of a failsafe. I'm guessing that this nut is bent because the shaft has forced, been forced further in or further out and it has bent this nut in the process. So if I, maybe if I unclamp it, I can wiggle this a bit looser um, it won't be under tension anymore. I've got one of these bolts off. Um, let's carry on with the others. It wasn't too bad, just a little bit of force. It broke the back of the nut and it unscrewed, so it was not as rusted as it looks. Two bolts down. These two are not coming off easily. And I'm worried that if I I mean, I'm pulling a lot of force into these and worried that I'm going to snap the heads off of them, which would be quite annoying. So I'm going to go and get hold of some penetrating fluid, like WD-40, and probably leave it overnight to loosen these bolts up. I'm hoping, oh, I don't know what I'm hoping, because I feel like this is going to be a right bugger, this bolt. It's going to be a right bugger to remove, but we'll see, we'll see. I'll go get some fluid and then we'll go from there. I've sprayed some penetrating like WD-40 stuff in every nook and cranny that I can in these two bolts. So on the top and the bottom and also down the side as well, see what I can do there. And I've also sprayed it down this bolt. As you can see, it's bent. But I have managed to hammer it out a little bit more, so I've put... This is an 8mm bolt. I've put a 6mm bit on this end and I'm hammering it and it is starting to move. So, this is good, it's going out. So, hammered it through my 6mm bolt. Here is my 8mm bolt and what, look how bent this thing is. Hopefully, this fluid will work on these bolts and I mean, you can see all the way through now. Give it another spray, leave it to soak in and jobs could be a good one. Okay, guys, <laughs> this is what I've resorted to. One of these bolts, spanner sort of trapped on the underside there, socket wrench on top, and it's finally come through with a combination of the f penetrating fluid and the heat gun. I've just left the heat gun on it for like two or three minutes on the low heat setting to just, and I've turned it off intermittently, sort of slowly warm it all up, make it hot, and finally this bolt is coming out. And this one though, this one I can't get to move at all yet, so this is even more stubborn, but three, well four down, one to go. Okay, 
We're about 45 minutes into this exercise. And guys, this is big. This is actually the first time I've done this myself. Boom, all four bolts out. I'm twisting this, the uh, coupling to the gearbox, and look what's not twisting. The prop shaft, the prop shaft is staying still. It gets caught there, interestingly. And there's the hole, the little like, that goes all the way through. So, prop shaft is, I guess it's in theory free. We can have a go at pulling it out from outside the boats. That's super exciting! <laughs> <laughs> that took me so long to get those four bolts out. You know what finally did it, I think, well, is the heat. I just left the heat gun on low heat on that bolt for like a minute on either side, let it cool down a little bit, then tried to wiggle that bolt and it just came undone. Boom. Hello, Walt. Hello. <laughs> yes, okay, okay, fine. Right. Okay, so now we've got all the bolts out. The prop shaft should slide. This side? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. slide like you want it to slide, but it does. Oh, it's coming though. Yeah, but you can't get it out because you need the... I know, we've got to take off these anodes, which is tonight or tomorrow's job. Yeah, that's cool. Now we're going to take Walter for a walk. <laughs> Should we go for a walk? Yeah! Yeah! Just undone the little bolts on this anode and I can't get it off, so I've got a trusty hammer. Whack it off, here we go. She's going. Hey! Look at that, done. So what that means is the prop shaft can come out now. We might need to remove the prop though because we've got to get it past the rudder. So let me have a little play and then see. It's coming. It's coming more. Look at that for a view. Prop shaft view. It's coming. Oi, oi. Oh, I think that's the fish eye. That was freaky. <laughs> I was looking at it through the viewfinder. When you do this, it makes it look like the prop shaft is really bent. <laughs> oh, it's quite concerning. Oi, it's gonna come out. Right, look, this is where it could get a problem. So that's the end of the prop shaft. Will it get past the rudder? Almost definitely no. Look at that for a view. You know, this is about from there to there, it's got to come out. What's that? About half a meter, maybe more. Um, it's not going to sneak out past that distance between that to the rudder. So we've got to take the prop off. So, next step how do you remove a prop? Do I need a special tool? When was the last time the prop came off? Tune in next time. That's tomorrow's job because Flick's getting really angry with me that I'm still doing jobs and it's quarter to nine. Nope, it's quarter past nine. So that's why she's even angrier than I thought. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it till tomorrow. But that's cool, the prop shaft is almost out. I'm gonna do some research tonight, figure out how to take a prop off. I hope you don't need a special tool. That would just be quite annoying. It looks like this is just a little gadget, a widget to hold the anode, stop it spinning, because that slots in there. I'm guessing just a big spanner. I don't even know if my spanner is big enough. And you just talk that. But how are you going to have to do something to stop the shaft spinning? Because the shaft wants to spin. So have I made a mistake? Should I have taken the prop off before I decoupled it? off of the gearbox because now it's a lot harder to how do you stop that rotation to get this nut off hmm i need to go away and research it all right but good night guys i managed to get the prop off that very next day all i needed was a quick trip to screw fix to pick up a ginormous adjustable spanner 
It turned out to be quite an easy job after that. On inspecting the cutlass bearing, we added a new job to the list. We decided to replace the bearing. You can see that it was quite flat spotted in places and we'd noticed some vibration in the prop shaft before we got hauled out. So we thought, whilst we're here, hauled out and with the prop shaft already removed, we might as well just get it done. It cost £50 for a new one, which isn't too bad. A new one should end up removing that shaft vibration, so we think it was definitely the right call to make. The prop should be more efficient and it should put less wear and tear on the gearbox. The hard part of this whole operation was getting the old cutlass bearing out of the V-bracket. I'm about to start the sort of, well, one stage of removal. The guy in the boatyard recommended put a, take out the grub screws, which I've done, little screws that hold it in place. And then you can get like special pullers that get it out, but you have to sort of manufacture your own or buy like an expensive tool. Or he said, you can hacksaw it. So I've hacks, I'm gonna have a go at hacksawing. I've put the blade in, put it back on the hacksaw handle. And now I'm just gonna hacksaw in one spot, cut through the cutlass bearing, but I have to be careful that I don't start cutting through the metal P bracket, this thing, the big metal chunk coming down from the boat. And then once you've done that, you should be able to like basically get a screwdriver under where you've cut and sort of make it fold in on itself and it'll come out easily because they're very hard to get out once they're in. How's it going? Well, very committed. <laughs> very nervous face. I don't want to ruin the P bracket. Basically, if I cut too deep here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you are bit. No, that, no, that's still going through the brass. This is a brass, a brass ring that goes inside, and then the rubber. This is all you can see. It's super perished. Yeah. Like that. But you're fine getting uh, rid of the brass ring. Yeah, have to cut it, cut it, so you can collapse the circle, and then it will come out. I've cut through at the edge, edges almost cut through, it's the middle that's not cut through. Mm. Gently. <sighs> Still not through the metal actually. As soon as I put a single cut into that cutlass bearing, I was fully committed. I had no choice. The cutlass bearing had to come out, because as soon as you put cuts in it, it no longer functions as a bearing. So throughout the day, the stress slowly built as this thing refused to come out. Right. Is it going to focus? This is the inside of the very mangled up cutlass bearing. Not really fit for purpose anymore. But now that I've cut this strip out, the circle is like folding on top of itself. So with a few more wax, I reckon it'll come out. Where's my... Uh... Your head, look at, point your head down. And it's blue. Like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been rubbing my head on this. Okay, let me see. Ready? It's coming. Is it? Yeah. Beep. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> no my stuck. Oh, no. I hit it, hit it back the other way. <laughs> Can you imagine if after all of that? I didn't think I caught that. I was too excited. <laughs> Do you want your... Yay! I think that means it's pretty corroded, the actual brass. Oh, look, there's a bit of brass. Yeah, there's brass colour in there, but it's like... It's gone. Yeah. Well, I don't know how it works. I think it's, it's corrosion. It's called desinfication. Um, this morning... Oh, uh, yeah. I, I took off this seacock, which I don't know if you can remember, but this is the seacock that was in the engine room. It's the seawater intake for the engine and the handle was like super rusty in fact it was so rusty that it it bent really quite easily when i tried to turn it the other day so it had to go but the problem was that i couldn't get you can ordinarily just replace the handle and that's not 
not like a big deal, but the problem was is that it is so rusted that there's a little bolt on the end of that, that and you couldn't get it off whilst it was still in the engine room. So I've taken it off. It's probably worth replacing it anyway. I think it's probably original to the boat. It only costs like 25 quid for a new one. And it's pretty critical seacock because it feeds the engine fresh water, uh, salt water, which keeps it cool. And also if it did pop off, that hole is below the water line. So we've replaced it anyway. And I'll just show you what we've done. There's a few things going on here, but here's the new seacock, so shiny. Um, with a new handle. I think that's galvanized or painted steel. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't rust quite so bad. And anyway, if it does, I'll keep quite a close eye on it and replace it. Take that nut off way before it rusts and welds itself together with rust. There's only one Jubilee clips. There's only one of these because actually just as I was tightening the second one to refit this hose, it went and snapped. So it just snapped right here. I think I've seen this before online like doesn't take much for these to snap that they start getting a little bit corroded and I'm guessing this is not proper 316 stainless steel because there is rust. I need to go to the shops and get I'm going to replace this Jubilee clip as well just in case yeah hopefully we won't have that problem again. Two shiny new Jubilee clips fitted and I think that is a job's a good one. This coupling in an earlier video you will have seen that this was very rusty what I've done is I've primed it and I'm painting it. I'm just um, spray painting it with some silverish paint just to protect it from the rust really more than anything else. Uh, a few jobs to do in the engine room is install, as you can see here, the prop is just poking through the stern gland, but it does not connect to the engine yet. Um, that's because they have not connected it yet. Because I'm waiting, I need to fit the shaft seal to make this a watertight seal into the boat. So. This is our new shaft seal with our little rubber dingamajig, this blue thing. I do take this off, but I don't take it off until, uh, well, kind of now. I'm not going to finish this job today, but what I've done is fitted this. I've not tightened up the hose clamp yet, which I need to. And I need to make sure that this rubber phalange has not, is definitely seated around the stern, the gland basically, where it exits the boat. Because if it's not, it could slip off and then you've got a, basically you've got a hole in the boat, <laughs> which is not ideal. I've got to attach the shaft to the coupling once this paint is dried, because this is a third coat and it says to put at least three or four coats. But this is like one of the big jobs for us to tick off whilst we're on the hard, so. And it involves me doing a lot of things I've never done before, and it's all kind of scary. Um, but just sort of figuring it out step at a time and seeing how far I can get. And worst comes to the worst, I can ask somebody for help. But at the moment, we're okay. Hmm. Yeah, the only problem with that theory, I guess, is that this, we're gonna launch the boat after me installing this. And then the first time we're gonna find out whether I've done it correctly or not is when we when we launch the boat. And um, it's either gonna be leaking or it's not. As you can see, I'm on the opposite side of the engine room now. So let's go ahead and tighten this little doohickey. Next step, wait for the paint to dry on the coupling, which has now been painted a beautiful silver. This had steel nuts before, which rusted heavily and they were horrible to get rid of. I'm replacing these with stainless steel, these are 10 mil bolt holes. 10 mil bolts, except this little, this one little one, it's still quite big, eight mil hole. This shiny prop was the result of a couple hours of sanding at various grits, followed by some metal polishing. And oh my, <laughs> looks so good. What a difference to what it used to be. I'm sure we've got some before footage of when I, try, I was trying to take it off before we'd sanded it or anything. 
I've given it a proper good sanding and polishing. So sanding with 120 grit, then 240, get out the deeper scratches with those. And then onto like 600 grit, 1200 grit, and then polishing. It's not perfect, but it's still damn shiny. It's a heck of a lot better than it is. As you can see, I've fitted the anode on the end and they fitted the other anode on the prop shaft. And that's it for anodes on our boat. That's what we had before, so I'm gonna stick with it because it seems to be working. Hi folks, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It makes a huge difference to us and it helps us stay motivated to hopefully create better videos for you.